My name is Dominic Lorock, and I would like to talk about the software releases we did in the PEAK project. I'll be talking about enhancing the GASPI programming model. We explored different uh, venues to do that. This is, we implemented a compression library for um, GASPI. We explored different ways to uh, um, implement eventually consistent data types and collectives, and we integrated GASPI into OMS. Today, I want to talk about the complex compression library. The outline of my talk, I want to start with an application scenario, and um, which is a distributed training of deep neural networks. We will see that the main issue with training to large deep neural networks is the communication bottleneck. And uh, we will motivate that uh, we will need a compression library to mitigate this issue. This will lead us to the implementation of the complex library, which uh, builds on the GASPI uh, uh, software stack. Uh, finally, I will talk about the results for distributed deep neural network training, which we could achieve with a complex library. So let's first let me start with the application scenario. First, the question, who can train state-of-the-art deep neural networks? Uh, on the left-hand side, we can see state of the, the biggest state-of-the-art networks over the years um, as measured by the number of trainable parameters within those models. As we can see, this number has increased exponentially, and today's networks have over 530 billion parameters, or two terabytes of memory, simply required to store those large models. It should be clear that we can't train those networks in a simple workstation. We need some kind of bigger uh, cluster infrastructure, as shown on the right hand side. This is Google's TPU for uh, version 4 cluster. However, only a very few uh, uh, institutions can actually um, possess such big um, systems, such uh, infrastructures to train those models. So to make this technology actually accessible to a larger audience, we need to make DNN training more efficient. So what's the problem with the training of distributed deep neural networks? In the center, we can see our cluster setup. We have several nodes, computation nodes, which everyone, each and every one of them has a subset of our data set. On, on every node, we train the neural network model. We do that by showing the neural network some input and calculating some prediction. Since this is our data, a training set, we know what the ground truth should be, and we can calculate an error. This error we then back propagate to find uh, correction terms for the weights in our deep neural network. Those correction terms are also called the gradient. Now, on a single node setup, we would be uh, as good as finished because we just need to apply this correction to our weights, and we can start with the next training step. On a distributed setup, however, we need to send this gradient to every other node and also receive all the other gradients from all the other nodes. Um, so we can average the gradient and apply it to our weights. This implies a lot of communication within our uh, infrastructure. And actually, this kind of uh, communication overhead is a general problem for many um, distributed applications, not only deep neural network training. To show how severe the problem of communication overhead is for distributed deep neural network training, I want to show this measurements here. Here we can see the time spent on the computation of the neural network and the commu uh, communication of the gradients. The solid lines are the communication times, where the dotted lines are the computation times. Um, and we can see that there's a break-even point at which the computation time is actually less than the communication time. And we can see that this happens already at a very low number of nodes. So the communi that indeed communication is a very se um, severe problem for the scaling of the training of deep neural networks. We try to mitigate this problem with our complex uh, communication library. So let me talk about complex now. 
So the key observation which um, was made is that most of the communicated data in the gradient is actually unnecessary. You can um, see that with an experiment in which we remove data from the gradient before we send it around. On the left plot, we can see the training of a relatively small topology called Lynette on the MNES data set. You can see the accuracy plot, final accuracy plotted over the compression ratio. As we can see, it's only after a compression ratio of a factor 10,000x that we see a serious degradation in the accuracy of our models. Also for bigger topologies and uh, more complex data sets as seen on the right hand side table, we can still compress with a factor of over 100. So indeed, deep neural networks are very resistant to the compression or to, the, um, to removing elements from the gradient. And this is a key idea of the compression libraries. And we use lossy compression by sparsification and local error accumulation. So the central part really is the sparsification of the data. So what we do is we decide which elements are actually essential and important for the um, training of, a, of our neural network. The easiest way to do this is for example to apply a threshold to a gradient. We choose, for example, to only send 10% of the highest values in our gradient. With the rest of the data, we do not simply discard the data, but we accumulate the error which we made by sparsification locally. And we apply this error to the next iteration, to the gradient of the next iteration. The data which we want to send around what we need to do is we need to encode it into a sparse data format. So we actually do save some memory space. We can do this, for example, by index value pair encoding. On the target or receiver side, it's very, rather simple. All we need to do is to decode the sparse format into a dense format. And then, then we can continue uh, handling the data as, as with an uncompressed scheme. Based on this idea, we can build the complex communication library. We implement first point-to-point -point communicators. On the very left hand side, we can see the basic scheme introduced from before, where we need to threshold, compress, and send data, and receive and decompress on the receiver side. We implement this not only using the, uh, the previously introduced compression scheme, but also exploiting the unique properties of the GASPI programming model, specifically the single-sided communication. So we can overlap computation and communication in a very efficient way. We can, by combining compression and single-sided communication, also think of more complex uh, communication schemes. For example, the forwarding operation, we don't need to do unnecessary threshold in compression, but can directly send compressed data to another node. Now combining all of those point-to-point -point communicators, we can construct um, operators for the training of deep neural networks, the so-called collectives. Specifically for the training of deep neural networks, is the all we need the all reduce operator, which facilitates the reduction and the, the averaging of the gradients across all the nodes makes sure that the, this average gradient is also received on, uh, on all the other nodes. We, we do this by combining the different operators, as we can see on the right-hand side, um, to implement this or this collective in many various ways, in which we can actually strike trade-offs between the GASPI um, single-sided communication and the compression schemes. For the case of deep neural network training, we implemented three of those or reduced implementations. Let me come to the results now. What we show first are results for the all reduce operations without deep neural network training. That is, we just simply look at the communication of the all reduce operators. Here, first we show a slow network, um, how, as it is typical for cloud setups, using, using Ethernet infrastructure. 
the four plots show uh, four different setups with varying amounts of nodes, from eight, ranging from eight nodes to 64. We uh, not only use the compressed schemes, the compressed or reduced schemes, but also use uncompressed schemes, which are very similar, but simply do not use compression as a reference. We measure the time the or reduce operation needs to finish as a function of the gradient size, which resides on the nodes. As we can see across all setups, we can achieve a communication speed up of a factor of 10. But even for faster networks, for example, here an InfiniBand network, which has roughly a factor of 10 better bandwidth and much lower latency, you can still achieve a very good uh, speed up of a factor of two using the compressed schemes over the uncompressed reference implementations. Now, when we start to combine or, or reduce operators with, the, uh, with uh, deep neural networks, uh, we want to use a, a framework to implement our deep neural network um, topologies and facilitate the training. So what we did is we wrapped our or reduce operators into TensorFlow and implemented optimization um, operate, operations to facilitate the training of distributed neural networks. Um, as we can see in this plot, we measure the accuracy over the uh, time of our training and see that even though we use a compression of X100, can still achieve the same accuracy as with the uncompressed baseline implementation. As for the speed up, uh, what we can see here is that it's a single training step of the ResNet 152, um, on where we can see first the forward and backward pass, and then the communication phase. We decided to split the computation and communication this way so it can be uh, compared more easily. We can see that the uncompressed scheme needs uh, nine times longer for the computer for the communication than the compressed scheme, which only uses a fraction of the time for, for the communication phase. To conclude my talk, lossy compression can improve the efficiency of applications in terms of time to a solution, which eventually means that we can also save a lot of energy. Comprex is a communication library built on the GASP programming model, which reduces the communication overhead and, and enables applications on relatively slow networks, for example, cloud setups with Ethernet um, uh, infrastructure. The distributed training of deep neural networks can actually highly benefit from very high compression ratios of over a factor of 100. Thank you very much for your attention.